Hi, this is Kenneth Corgan, and this presentation I will cover data, data, database management systems and database structure from sections 1 and 2 of the database chapter. Um, alrighty. So for a quick introduction uh, into them, databases are organized collections of related data and are very common in everyday life as in usual, for some usual examples. They're known for storing employee records, student records, and medical records, among countless other things. Although, with the very large quantity of valuable information that they can hold, the danger of hacking is very real. Additionally, many people are skeptical about their privacy potentially being invaded through the use of databases without integrity, and uh, privacy can also be infringed through hacking. All right. Um, in database management systems. Um, DBMSs, uh, which are short for database management systems, are used to create and maintain databases. They can also be referred to or also known as relational database management systems or RDBSs. RDBMSs. Um, when dealing with database systems, a common mistake is associating spreadsheet applications such as Microsoft Excel with DBMSs. Spreadsheet applications focus on numerical operations rather than organizing data, which is what database management systems do. So the database structure. Um, databases are organized into fields, records, and tables. A uh, field is the smallest piece of information in the database and is a property of an item. For example, specific characteristics such as the name of a student, the type of cloth and a clothing, and the email of an employee are all fields. Records are a collection of related fields. An example would be the employee's name, cell phone number, home phone number, email, and job type for a single employee. Finally, a table is a collection of records that are all the same. For example, the record of the single employee would be placed under a table specifically for employees only. So essentially they're all related. Um, fields are the smallest um, pieces of information, obviously. Uh, records come after and then tables are the largest and most, broadest, most broad. Um, so primary and composite keys. Um, every table has a primary key, also known as a key field. Um, a primary key is a field that is different for every record in a table, allowing each record to have a unique identification. Um, to refer back to the employee example that I gave before, if each had an identification number, this would be considered a primary key because it would be different for each employee, even if they had the same name. A name would not make an appropriate primary key because two employees just may have the same name. Composite keys, on the other hand, are useful when a primary key is insufficient. To form a, compo a composite key, two or more fields must be combined to create a unique identification. An example of the composite key, with reference to the employee example, is, the, is a single employee's first name and last name with their birth date to follow. Um, this actually combines three composite keys uh, and makes it more specific, although I do not find it to be as useful as a primary key. So to secondary keys, um, secondary keys are similar to primary keys and they are commonly referred to as alternative keys or indexes. A secondary key is a field that is frequently used to search in a table, but it does not ne necessarily have to be unique. Um, due to the lack of need for uniqueness, there is a possibility for sever several secondary keys to be present in a table. Um, the picture here at the bottom of the screen features a couple of secondary keys uh, highlighted or title and surname, um, and they serve as the and the ID on the far left, uh, referring back to the last slide, is the primary key. The first secondary key is the surname. Uh, the title, as it further, the title is the other, as it further specifies the identity of a person. Um, this is useful in the case of an unfamiliar person looking uh, into a database searching for a specific um, item, as they may not know the ID, which is the primary key, but instead might know the surname and title. All right. Um, for data type, um, each field needs a data type. Um, as this determines what kind of data can go into a field. 
A number field allows only numeric data, and an auto number field increases by one with each new record, um, which we're actually familiar with making. Um, it just involves adding a new field in. Um, a text field allows letters, numbers, and symbols for up to 255 characters. And a memo, which is very similar to a text field, is the same as a text um, data type uh, without the restrictions on characters. So it allows letters, numbers, and symbols, but instead of allowing only 255 characters, it's there is no limit. Um, the yes and no data type is quite self-explanatory, as it allows only two options, either yes or no, or any other two options you can think of. Um, the date and time type is, once again, just like the yes or no type, quite simple. Um, it shows the date and time in the computer's format. Uh, finally, the attachment type is used for adding files of any type. And these are my sources. And for the last slide.